prove this rule, um, we're given f of a is equal to 0 and g of a is equal to 0, right? And this is saying if f prime a and g prime a exist. Exist. So, we're given a limit as x approaches a of f x over g x equals f prime a over g prime a. That's L'Hopital's rule. To start off, if we know this, uh, <clears throat> let's start off with f prime a over g prime a. Let's start off with that side. So we know that f prime a, if we use the definition of the derivative, it would be limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. That's f of a. g prime a is g prime a is limit as x approaches a of g of x minus g of a over x minus a. Saying this over this would give you uh, wait, let me put it over here. f prime a over g prime a is the same as that over that. So, limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a, all of that over limit as x approaches a of g of x minus g of a all over x minus a. If these two limits are the same, we can basically just combine it into one big thing, right? So that's like saying uh, <coughs> f prime a over g prime a is equal to limit as x approaches a <laughs> uh, f of x minus f of a over x minus a all over g of x minus g of a over x minus a. Now, we have an x minus a on the bottom uh, of the g prime a and an x minus a on the f prime a, right? So if we take that and we multiply it by x minus a both on the top and the bottom, that would leave us, um, if, okay, so if we have limit x over, x to, as x approaches a of fx minus fa over x minus a over gx minus g of a over x minus a, we can multiply it by x minus a on the top and the x minus a. This cancels out with that and this cancels out with that, leaving you with limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over g of x minus g of a. This is the same as saying um, as f as x approaches a, um, this is like saying this is just f of This is like just saying f of x, right? And this is saying g of x. And we take the limit of that. So it'd be total, it would be limit as x approaches a of f x over g x. Which is right here. Limit as x approaches a 
of f of x over g of x equals to this. Okay, let's try some L'Hopital's rule. Um, let's say that limit of x, now as x approaches 0, of 2 sine of x uh, minus sine of 2x over uh, x minus sine of x. Um, yeah, let's, let's try this one. Um, well, if we plug in uh, 0 for x, we see that sine of 0 is 0 times 2 is going to be 0 still. Uh, the same here, it's going to be 0. So this is a 0 over, let's say, let's see here, um, this is another 0 minus sine of x of 0, which is going to be 0, and another 0, and this is where we have to apply Laptal's rule. Since this is a special case, um, we get that we're going to have to find the derivatives of the numerator and the denominator. So, um, let's see. Um, the derivative for the nominate or the numerator will be um, two sine of x, which is just going to be two cosine of x uh, minus sine of two x, which is going to be by chain rule first uh, the inside, which is going to be just two, and sine of x is going to be cosine of two x. Now the bottom, uh, that's a one minus cosine of x. So that's the derivative of those two. Now if we find the limit of that as x approaches 0, we get that uh, cosine of 0 is 2 uh, times is 1, sorry, times 2 is 2 minus 2 times cosine of uh, 0 times 2 is cosine of 0, which is 1 uh, times 2 is 2, so 2 minus 2 is 0 and 1 minus cosine of 0, which is 1 is going to be 0, 2. So we have to do it again. Let's try it. Um, okay, let's find the derivative again of the numerator and the denominator. So um, let's see. This is going to be 2 sine of x uh, minus, um, let's see, the outside is going to be 4 because this um, is going to be multiplied by the one that is already there and uh, the derivative of cosine of 2x is going to be negative sine of x so this becomes a positive sine of 2x over the derivative of this which it is just 0 minus the, the derivative of cosine of x which is negative, no not negative, just sine of x and uh, let's see what this gives us uh, as the limit of x approaches 0, this is going to be uh, 0 times 2, 0, um, 4 times sine of 2x, which is 0, is just going to be another 0, and sine of x is going to be 0. So, we have to do it again. Let's see. This x approaches 0 of the derivative of um, negative 2 sine of x, we know the Derivative is going to be negative 2 cosine of x um, plus 8 cosine of 2x. We do chain rule again, and it's it's pretty simple. And on the bottom, we just find the derivative of sine, which is cosine of x. Let's see what that gives us. Negative 2 times cosine of 0, uh, it's going to be negative 2 plus 8 times cosine of 2 times 0. Uh, cosine of 0 is going to be 1 times 8 is going to be negative 2 plus 8 over cosine of 0 is just 1. So the limit for this is going to be 6 over 1 or just 6. So now we can say that the limit as x approaches 0 for 2 sine of x minus sine of 2x over x minus sine of x is equal to 6.
Hi, so I'm Dustin and I'm going to teach you how to prove Newton's method. Newton's method is basically saying um, if you have a curve, right, if you have a graph, uh, you're trying to find the root, the root, let's say this xn, right? Newton's method is saying that if you take a, like another root, right, and you draw a tangent line to that point right here, let's say this xn plus 1. If you draw a tangent line, um, your root that hits your another root will be closer to x n than x n plus one would be, right? So your x n plus two, the distance between x n and x n plus two would be shorter than x n plus two or x n and x n plus one. Okay, so that it's also saying that if if you draw a line up into that curve, the tangent line that hit that spot would be closer to xn than xn plus 2 would be to xn. So xn plus 3, right? So that's just kind of a graphical representation of it. So now I'm going to teach you how to get to um, the formula for Newton's method, which is x uh, m plus 1 is equal to x of n um, plus f x of n over f prime x of n. That's the general equation. I'm going to teach you how to get to that. Um, so to do that, we have to know the definition of a derivative, right? And that's saying d of f, the function, over d of x, or dx, is equal to the limit. Um, for now, just to make it simple, I'm going to use x and xo. Um, the limit as x approaches x o, or x0, right? And that's like saying f of x minus f of x o over x minus o, or x minus, sorry, x minus minus x o, right? So this can be rewritten just as f, uh, f prime of x equals the limit of x as x approaches x o of f of x minus f of x o over x minus x o. So we know from the graph that uh, that if if x o is is the root um, is the root, then that would mean that f of x o is equal to uh, zero. Right, because it hits the x-axis and it's y is zero. Y for x o is zero. Right. So um, knowing that, uh, we have the equation f prime x is equal to f of x or limit. Sorry, limit as x approaches x o of f of x over x minus x o. Right? So now we need to solve for x in terms of uh, the point xo, its function, fxo, and uh, its derivative, f prime x of, of xo. So um, solve for x, for x, for x in terms of point x o its function and its derivative right solve for x in terms of point x o its function and its derivative so um, if we move over to here uh, now, okay, we have this equation already, right? f prime x is equal to limit of x approaches x o of f of x over x minus x zero. We can ignore the limit portion, like just that one portion for now. And if we solve for x, we'll get x minus x o is equal to f of x over f prime x, right? And if we're solving for x in terms of its point, its function, and its derivative, then we'd have to have x is equal to xo 
plus f of x o, its function, and its derivative, f prime of x o. And if we have x1, basically, right, it's, that's a 1, x1, and x0, if we take the 0 as an n, um, let 0 equal n, right, then we would have x of n plus 1, right, 0 plus 1 is 1, is equal to x of n plus f of xn over f prime xn. And that right there is that. Is that. Okay, thank you, and have a good time. Hi guys, this is Jenny, and I'll show you how to find the derivative of the inverse function. So, if you have an y equals sine inverse of x, and we flip the x and y, then we get x equals sine y. From there, we just take the derivative of the whole thing. So then we get 1 equals cosine of y times y prime. The y prime is because of the chain rule because y is a function of x. So from there we move the cosine y to the other side and y prime becomes 1 over cosine of y and from trig identities we know that cosine squared y plus sine squared y equals 1 so cosine squared y equals 1 minus sine squared y and y cosine y equals square root of 1 minus sine squared y. And since we know that x equals sine of y, we can plug that into this equation to get the, the cosine y equals square root of 1 minus x squared. And with this, we plug it back into there to get y prime equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay. So the next one is tangent inverse of x. So same thing, y equals tangent inverse of x, x equals tangent of y. And from there, we take the derivative of the whole thing and d dx um, x is equal to 1 equals secant squared y times y prime again because of the chain rule and move this to the other side y prime equals 1 over secant squared of y and also from trig identities we know that we know that secant squared of y equals 1 plus tangent squared of y and we know that tangent of y is equal to x. So plug in, in, plugging this into there, we get secant squared of y equals 1 plus x squared. So plug this into there, we get y prime is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Oh boy, linearization. Okay, now, when we first start off, let's say we have a graph, like a curve, right? And that's y is equal to f of x, right? If we have, okay, let's say we have this x coordinate right here, right? That's going to leave just, just x, right? And so the corresponding y value is going to be f of x, correct? Because if we have x, y is equal to f of x, x, that, right? Okay, cool. Um, so now, linearization is basically like saying, like, uh, what is that, what is f of x, um, if we know a point, if we know how to do a point that's like really close to it, right? So like x, let's say this is x, o, oh, right? That'll leave this as f, x, o, right? x, f of x, x, o, f, x, o, right? So, now, um, 
linearization, let's just go with the formula. Linearization would be f of x is equal to f x o plus f prime x o times x minus x o. I'll get to how we get that into a, like in a second. But that's the general equation that we want to get, right? To find f of x. So now, um, to do this, let's start with the equation of a line. y equals mx plus b. Really, ge really general, like simple stuff, right? We can say y is f of x. And so, the what we're trying to find now, let's try to find m, right? m wouldn't, it, if we take the slope of the tangent line of x o, right here, we're gonna say that like the slope of that line of x would be also be like really close to it, right? Like it almost hit that point right there. So <clears throat> the slope of m, or the slope of this, that, the tangent line, would be f x equals to f prime x o x plus b. And we get that just because of the slope of this line, right? Of the tangent line to x o. That's that, derivative of that. So, uh, <coughs> from here, we can sub in that one point right here. x o comma f x o, right? That's the point of that line where it intersects, right? Or where it passes, right? So, if we plug that into this equation, it'll give us f x o equal to f prime x o times x o plus b. Now we just need to find b, right? b, if we subtract over this onto this side, uh, I'm gonna write b on this side, so that way it's easier to see. But that would just give you f x o minus f prime x o times x o, right? That'll just give you b. From here, we have b, and we have all of this for the equation for that line. So we can just plug that into here. That'll give us f x equals f prime x o times x plus f x o minus f prime x o times x o. Right? So we have f prime x o times x here, and we have f prime x o times x o here. So that's kind of like saying, if we factor out the f prime x o, that's like saying f prime x o times x, right here, minus that x o plus f x o. That'll give you f x, right? So now, that's basically like saying this equation, just kind of if you flip this over here, f x equals f x o plus f prime x o times x minus x o. That is the same as that. Thank you. Okay, let's try some linearization. So um, let's say that f of x is equal to the square root of 82. Um, let's graph that just to have a little idea of what it is. So this is um, the graph for the square root of x and let's say that 82 is out here. So what we are trying to find is this point right here. This is going to be f of x which we don't know. So um, linearization tells us that if we find a number that is close enough um, for which we know the answer in this case let's try 81 which is pretty close and uh, we find the tangent line for that number or for that function then uh, we can find the tangent line for the other one and get an approximation so we know let's oh, okay so let's see let's say that x of 0 is equal to 81 because that's the number we're going to be choosing and we know that the f of x 0 is equal to 9 that's right here so um, 
the formula tells us that to find f of x, uh, we need to find f of x0 plus f prime of x0 times x minus x0. Um, Alright, let's try it. Uh, f of x, we know x is 82 because, okay, well, we know this is 81 and we know this is 82. So, um, f of 82 is going to be equal to f of 81 plus f prime of 81 times x, which, which is just 82 minus x0, which is 81. Great, that's pretty straightforward. So let's let's see. F eighty two is going to be equal to f of eighty one, which is let's write it up here. The square root of eighty one. We know it's nine. We know it's nine. So um, nine plus uh, prime f of eighty one. Now let's see what the what the derivative of square root of 81 is so that we can find this. f prime of 81 is going to be equal to the uh, derivative of 81 which if we uh, change it is going to be 81 to 1 half. We know that we move this to the front and then we subtract 1 from this. So we're going to have uh, 1 half times 81 uh, over negative one half because this has to be subtracted by one half. I already said that. So um, that is one over two times square root of 81. Now, now this is a nine, so that is going to give us one over 18. All right, let's plug that in, and that times 82 minus 81. Simple enough. So let's let's add those two numbers. Um, let's see. We know that nine times eight is seventy-two. Nine times ten is uh, ninety. So that's one sixty-two uh, over eighteen plus one over eighteen. That's going to give us that f of eighty-two is equal to one sixty-three over. 18. Uh, now, if we use a calculator, we will get that. Let's see. 163 over 18 is equal to 9.05555. Well, that's an, an approximation. Let's say that's 9.05. And, um, yeah, that would be f of x, which means that the square root of 82 is equal, or more or less, equal to 9.05. Finding the equation of a tangent line. So when you're given a point in a function, there are two simple steps in order to find the equation. First, you find the slope of the tangent line by taking the derivative of the function. Next, you find the y-intercept of a tangent line using the given point and slope of the tangent line. So here's a simple example from last chapter. So the function is f of x equals x squared plus 1, and we want to find the tangent line at the point 1 comma 2. So first, we take the derivative of this function, which ends up being 2x, and then we plug in 1, which is the x value, and we get a slope of 2. From there, we plug in the y value, the slope, and the x value in order to find the y-intercept, which ends up being 0. So the equation of this tangent line ends up being y equals 2x. So now that we have done a quick and easy example, we're going to do some examples that relate more to chapter 2 with inverse functions. So the first example right here is the square root of x squared plus 2x plus 10 at x equals 3. So the first thing I did was plug in x equals 3 to the function, which ended up being 5. 
So when x is 3, y is 5. Next, I found the derivative of the function or the slope. So we get 2x plus 2 over 2 times square root of x squared plus 2x plus 10. When we simplify that, we get x plus 1 over the square root of x squared plus 2x plus 10. Then we plug in 5 into the x instead of 3 because we're taking the inverse. So we get 5 plus 1 over the square root of 25 plus 10 plus 10, which ends up being 6 over the square root of 45. Next, since this is the inverse function, we have to take the inverse of the slope. So I did 1 over m, which is the slope, equals 6 over the square root of 45. When we find the inverse, that will be square root of 45 over 6. So we have the slope, which is the square root of 45 over 6. Then we just plug in all the values to find the y-intercept. So I did slope-intercept form. So y minus 5 equals the square root, the square root of 45 over 6 times x minus 3. And then when we simplify all of this, we get y equals the square root of 45 over 6x minus the square root of 45 over 2 plus 5. Our next example is the function y equals sine inverse of the square root of 1 minus x squared at x equals the square root of 3 over 2. So first we convert the function so we get sine y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. From there we take the derivative so cosine y times y prime equals negative 2x over 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared. And when we simplify we get y prime equals negative x over x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. From there, we need to find the slope, so we plug in the value, the square root of 3 over 2 for x, and then when we simplify, we get negative 2 for the slope. Then we need to find the y value, so f of the square root of 3 over 2 equals sine inverse of the square root of 1 minus square root of 3 over 2 squared, which ends up being 1 half. So now that we have our intercept and we have our slope, we could plug it in, so y minus 1 half equals negative 2 times x minus square root of 3 over 2. And when we simplify it all, we get y equals negative 2x plus the square root of 3 plus 1 half as the equation of the tangent line. Our last example is the function f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 8 at the point x equals 0 0.6. So first, we're going to plug in 0.6 to get the y value. So f of 0.6 equals the square root of 0.6 squared plus 2 times 0.6 plus 8, which ends up being 3.1. Next, we're going to take the derivative of the function. So we get 2x plus 2 all over 2 times the square root of x squared plus 2x plus 8. When we simplify, we get x plus 1 is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 8. From there, we're going to plug in the y value of the function. So 3.1 plus 1 all over square root of 3.1 squared plus 2 times 3.1 plus 8. And when we simplify, we get about 4 all over the square root of 24. And from there, we need to find the slope. So again, since the inverse, we have to take the inverse of the slope. So we end up getting square root of 24 over 4 as the slope of our function. From there, since we have a point and the slope, we could plug it in and we get y minus 3.1 is equal to square root of 24 over 4 times x minus 0.6. Then when we simplify it all out, we get y equals square root of 24 over 4x minus 3 times 20, the square root of 24 over 20 plus 31 times the square root of 24 all over 40. Okay, so on to the hyperbolic functions. Oh, we have y equals sine hyperbolic of x. That means y equals e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x over 2. So take to take the derivative of the whole thing, we... we do we apply the quotient rule which gives you 2 squared on the bottom and the derivative of the top which is e to the power of x minus times minus plus e to the power of negative x times the bottom 
and minus the derivative, I mean, the top times the derivative of the bottom. And that's equal, that, and this term goes to zero, and that equals 4 on the bottom, 2 times e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x, and that can be cancelled out, and that can be reduced, and that's equal to the cosine hyperbolic of x. Yay! Okay, so on to the last one, we have y equals tangent hyperbolic of x, which is equal to sine hyperbolic of x over cosine hyperbolic of x. That equals e to the power of x minus e to negative x over 2, whole thing over e to x plus e to negative x over 2. So for this, you have one half on both the denominator and the numerator, so you can cancel that out. And you get y equals e to the power of x minus e to negative x over e to x plus e to negative x. So to take the derivative of that, we have to use the quotient rule. y prime equals the denominator squared and on the top you get the top the derivative of the top which is e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x times the bottom which is the same thing so I just square that and minus the derivative of the bottom which is e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x times the top which is the same thing. So I just square that and looking at the numerator, you get a squared minus b squared, which is equal to a minus b times a plus b. So I'll use that. So this becomes e to the power of x plus e to negative x onto squared and on the top you get a minus b minus that oh no and times a plus b which is plus e to x minus e to negative x and then just clean that up a bit you get you these to cancel out this to cancel out so you get e to x plus e to negative x squared on the bottom and 2 e to negative x times 2 e to x and that's equal to 4 times e to 0 because you add the powers over e to x plus e to negative x squared. So the top is 1, I mean 4. And since we know that cosine hyperbolic of x is equal to e to the power of x plus e to negative x, over 2, that's equal to 1 over ah, 1 over cosine hyperbolic squared of x. So, so, uh, d dx tangent hyperbolic of x equals secant hyperbolic squared of x. Thank you. <laughs>